What's up, everybody? Turn up that volume real quick. Um, so if you guys try real, real hard, one day you too can have bags under your eyes like me. You gotta try real hard, though. Try real, real hard. No, I'm just kidding. I've been swimming this morning, and my goggles, they <laughs> suction all that stuff out. So my bags are not that bad, but I am awfully baggy. Um, but yeah, that's just the price we pay. It's just the price we pay for age, right? <laughs> age and sleepless nights. Um, I want to come and talk to you guys about feelings because I think we live in a world that applauds. Sorry, I'm going to pull my towel up. I'm still in my swimsuit. I, this is like a makeshift swimsuit. It's uh, swim bottoms and a sports bra, and it's awesome. It works great. So if you are looking for an athletic swimsuit and you're not a one-piece gal, Walmart bottoms, sports bra, first class. So um, I feel like we live in a society that almost we're so busy, and that the, y'all know that one of my favorite hashtag sarcasm. Um, sayings that people say when you ask them, hey, how you doing, is busy, busy. I hate it. Y'all, I can't stand it because we're all busy. But I also think like that is the go-to answer that we all pull out of our bag because, I don't know, our society seems to applaud that busyness. And I don't think that it's good at all. I think we've lost touch with a lot of things um, because we're so busy. we got to fill up the schedule. But as aside from that, you know, if you meet somebody and they ask you how you're doing, it's really, it's it's not an acceptable answer almost to say, I'm not doing great, you know, and it, and it, we just kind of, I don't know, I'm just, I just see more and more things that seem to want to people and applaud people for pushing their feelings down. And I don't think that that's great at all, but what I think that we can do, and this is a huge part of self-care, this is a huge part of a personal journey and transformation, but I think what we can do is we can begin to fight against that and we can be honest with ourselves. One of my favorite kid movies is Inside Out. It's the one with all the feelings that live inside of Riley's head. And one of the, the coolest takeaways from that movie is that all of your emotions have a place in your life. Um, there's a place for sadness, there's a place for anger, there's a place for disgust, there's a place for happiness and joy, and the lots of other emotions in between, but so often we are encouraged to push through these negative emotions like sadness because we just need to feel better again. And I think we do it to our kids in that when they're crying, it's whatever we can do to make them stop crying and feel better. If they're sad about something or disappointed about something, we want to, you know, we want to make them feel better, which there's nothing inherently wrong with that. But I think in the manner that we do it, we do a really good job of making people feel like it's not okay and it's not normal to feel sad or angry. Those are perfectly normal and acceptable emotions. If they were not, God would not have given us those on the spectrum of emotions to feel. Right now, and I shared this with you guys, um, my father-in-law passed away this past Friday. I cannot believe we're coming up on a week. Um, he was very, very sick, and he fought and hung in there for a long time. The initial, um, the death, his passing seems very quick because we put him on hospice on Wednesday and he passed early Friday morning and, and, and we knew it was coming, but nothing can quite prepare you for that. I didn't even, I, I, I didn't anticipate as often this goes, I did not anticipate how hard I was going to take his passing. In fact, I'm surprised that I'm talking about this without breaking down, which goes to show that, you know, you have good days, you have bad days. It's been hard, y'all. It's been so hard. And you're probably watching this video and maybe you're uncomfortable watching this video, which should speak to, you know, just how true that is, is that we're just not comfortable being around emotions that are not happy, you know? 
but it's crap, y'all. It's crap. And we would do ourselves and the whole society a world of good if we would begin to accept those as normal feelings. Now, obviously, if you feel like that all of the time, you probably want to get that checked out because it's okay to feel sad and angry and whatever. But if you feel that way all the time and you never have these moments of joy or um, happiness, there could be something else going wrong. But I just think for the for a... For the average individual that's not suffering from any type of mental illness, depression, anxiety, anything like that, it's normal to be sad. Just because you wake up and you're not happy, happy, happy every single day does not mean that you are a, an abnormal person. It means you're normal, okay? It's okay to wake up some days and just feel angry. It's okay to wake up some days and just be sad. It doesn't mean that you have some type of disease or something is wrong with you. Caveat, if that's the normal for you all the time, that's different. But I'm talking about just the average individual. If you wake up and you're just having a bad day, that's normal. And it's okay to have that. You have permission and you must give yourself permission to feel that way. We, you know, if you push bad things down, you push bad emotions down, um, bad being sad and angry, if you push those emotions down and you don't ever walk through them, you are going to lash out and do things to help you cope with those emotions on top of all that stuff. And that is what we see in individuals that seem to constantly sabotage themselves, is that they are not okay with feeling less than happy or sad or anything like that. And so they do things to mask those emotions to constantly try to cope with it. And we often see that with food. Food is very powerful. You know, they say that it's one of the most um, abused antidepressants. And I know that's to be true because think about when you're having a bad day and you're sad. You want to go face down in a vat of ice cream or chips or whatever junk food it might be. You know, it's just those help us cope. Food is so powerful as we have migrated or, you know, as we've walked through this grief process with my father-in-law, people want to cook for you. They want to bring you food and there's nothing wrong with that either. And my sister-in-law and I were talking about that. Like why is food so synonymous with every, <laughs> every huge milestone or event that we go through? And it's because there's so much comfort that comes from food, you know? Um, and that's fine, but we have to begin to sit in our emotions for long enough to actually deal with them. You can't shortchange yourself on any of the extremes and emotion that you feel. And if you have a loved one that has died, sit in it. Sit in it. That's not to say that you have to sit in it constantly, but you it's okay to feel those feelings. Feel those feelings. Don't push them away. Don't, don't try to, you know, I know I'm crazy and all this kind of stuff just feel them. Just feel them. They will pass eventually. What that eventually looks like for every person is so unique and so different. You know, there are some people who go through grief and they are able to cope with it very quickly. Um, there are others that it just takes longer and that's okay. We're all unique little snowflakes and how we process those emotions and those, how we process that entire thing is entire has everything to do with who we are as an individual and you'll you oftentimes can't expect or place some type of anticipation on how long you're going to feel that way so if that's you that you may be going through some stuff and you may be feeling sad or angry anything less than happiness all the time i would encourage you to find a way to sit in it i have a personal theory that and I don't know, you have to kind of, you got to qualify things. I feel like there's a lot of suicide lately. Or perhaps that suicide was always there, but we just see it more often. You know, with social networks, we're so connected to everybody that oftentimes now things are happening and we just hear about them more frequently and quicker because we're connected to so many people. So I don't know if it's more frequent or if it, actually, if it actually is more frequent or we're just hearing about it more, but I do believe that we hear more about young children 
separate from mental illness. This is not a, the mental illness discussion is huge and it's a and it's a key component, but that's not really what I'm talking about today. I'm not qualified to talk about that, so I'm only gonna I'm theorizing here. So just go with me. But oftentimes I feel like kids, because we have trained them from very very early, that you know. If you're crying and you're sad because you're disappointed and upset because you didn't get your way, you didn't win, you didn't whatever, let's go get some candy or let's go get a toy because we don't allow them to sit in that. And the message that that is sending is that those emotions, that if we're sad, if we don't do something quick to cover that up and make it better, we're always going to feel that way that those are permanent emotions and that's a dangerous message to send to little children because they need to know that it's okay to be disappointed and it's okay to be sad. It's not going to be the end of the world if you're sad and you didn't get your way. It's going to be okay. Everything will come to pass. Again, this is not the mental illness discussion, okay? Mental health separate of this. I'm talking about normal average emotions and it's okay to feel that way. Right now, with my father-in-law dealing with his death, you know, that's the closest to, that is the closest to losing my own parents. And I'm very fortunate that I have both of my parents. They're healthy. And, but that's not to say that they could, I couldn't wake up one day to a terrible phone call. You know, that's life. We're never guaranteed another day. But it, losing my father-in-law is this reality because in a lot of ways, he is like a daddy to me. He's my husband's father, and we've been married for 15 years. And that's, you know, you don't, you're not married. To, when you marry a person, you truly, you marry their family. And he treated me like a daughter. I tried to treat him like a daddy. Um, I don't know that I always did the best job. And that's, you know, that's, that's life. I can't sit in guilt over that because I can't change it. I tried to do the best I could, and he did the best he could. And that's true for a lot of people. His passing hurts in ways that I can't even explain. It is a hole in my heart. Not just because nobody can take his place, but I'm watching my husband walk through the loss of his father. I'm watching my kids walk through the loss of their, fa their grandfather. I'm watching my mother-in-law walk through what it is like to live without her husband of 52 years. You, I love and adore these people and to watch them walk through a very painful process hurts because I can't fix it. And so that's what's caused me to want to talk about this today because right now where we are, we have to sit in this. We can't sidestep it. We can't shortchange it. We have to walk through it. And so wherever you are today, whatever your emotions, sit in them and feel them. Stop trying to mask them, cover them up, push them down with food. Listen to your body. Listen to yourself. Talk with yourself about your feelings and know that it is okay to feel them. You're not a weird person. You're not a crazy person. You're a human being with emotions. And there ain't a thing wrong with that. It's a beautiful thing because the same thing that allows you to feel incredible sadness and anger is also the same mechanism that allows you to feel tremendous joy. You cannot have one without the other. It's the yin and the yang of the world. These exist and these exist and they can exist simultaneously. In walking through that funeral, the, the amount of laughter that was there, that was present, was a really beautiful thing. As we said goodbye to my father-in-law and we were in the room, we're weeping and there's so much sadness. And yet there was this tremendous amount of love. And so you have this awful traumatic tragedy coupled with all of the love. And we were able to just pour that onto him and pour that into each other. We bonded together as a family to get through this. So. Know that it's okay to feel your feelings. doesn't make you weird or crazy. It just means that you're human. Okay? Um, but explore that because a lot of our food disorders and our coping mechanisms of overeating and binge eating and whatnot, that's all coming from a place of trying to help you get through something that your body is going through. Do some exploration because if you ever want to fix that, that's a good place to start. 
All right. I hope you guys are having a great day so far. I want y'all to work hard, do something healthy for yourself, do something fun. The swimming business is a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it. And it's getting easier. Doesn't mean that it doesn't suck, but it's getting easier. And it's awesome cardio. Um, hope y'all are doing well. Keep it classy. Have a great day. Bye.